who has seen Tomb Raider? I know I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. You've seen it? You're I haven't. Odd woman out. Uh, we're spoiling Lauren no, we're today. So <laughs> we might spoil. It. it is a movie that has already come out uh, many years ago. <laughs> so, you know, spoilers are 15 oh, years spoilers old. Spoilers are abound. Yeah, they're, they're out. Um, so basically, this is a reboot mm-hmm. of a film that came out in 2001, I believe, with, and Angelina Jolie was the uh, main actress in it uh, before and she's been replaced by uh alicia vikander 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 we Vikander. Uh, if alicia or anybody from the film is listening uh or anybody who worked on the film is listening we're sorry if we butcher her no no, no. you got it right vikander mm-hmm. vikander okay big fan right here so I know. sweet awesome <laughs> that's what we, we got mean. a follower right here alicia vikander uh so uh she plays lara croft Basically, the story is like um, Indiana Jones meets Rogue One. Like, that's my opinion. Like, mm, it's those I, two I, I, things together. I, I think I actually pretty much agree with that assessment yeah. right there because it was definitely, definitely Indiana Jones. You could feel it in there. Yeah. It was a venture into, like, some unknown region, taking big risks into an unknown island and just discovering what's there, what evils lurk on this island. Yeah, yeah. E- exactly. So, uh Let's just do initial kind of reactions to this film. We were were we uh, disappointed? Did it meet our expectations? Did it exceed our expectations? I'm mean, gonna start with you, Ron. Um, I felt I felt it was actually a good story. Now, now keep in mind this is a personal disclaimer for me that I have uh, honestly I've never I haven't seen the original films with I um, haven't either with um Angelina, well, Angelina Jolie, yeah. which just went blank on her name. Um, <clears throat> Because I felt, I felt, yeah, <laughs> I felt. That's another show talking about Tron. Yes. Um, mm. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it only because I've really just been weary of uh, film adaptations of video games. Mm. But you know what? Taking on the. And this is one for anyone that doesn't know. This was a video game first. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you mentioned it was like a reboot of a film, but I don't really think of it that way. I think of it more of a, a you know, an a, origin a, story. Well, no, of a new, a new adaptation of the game. You yeah. Know? I don't really yeah. think of it as like okay. we're going to try to remake this film. It's like they had their their chance at it, and now we're. So I still think of it more it's, it's associated like, with the game than it's the like how movies. A Wrinkle in Time is not a reboot of the previous Canadian A Wrinkle in Time movie. It's just oh, another I didn't adaptation. Know there was a Canadian one. Yes, there was. <laughs> All right, we should have talked about that last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> wrinkle in Time and Tron. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna bring that the whole, the whole time. Um, no, it was interesting. It was interesting to see to see this character. It almost seemed like an origin, uh, uh, like a reboot of an origin yeah. story mm-hmm. for. Uh, for Laura Croft, yeah, and I felt that this was a compared. To, I'm only comparing the this film to possibly the the trailers of the original Tomb Raider series with mm-hmm. Angelina Jolie. That this one felt a little bit more realistic. It felt like mm-hmm. I did, was going on an adventure. It did feel like um, there was more backstory to it and a little bit more exploration. Now I do have some qualms about the film as well too in mm-hmm. certain scenes, and I. I I kind of also laughed at the uh, music score. And it's mm. interesting that I laughed at the music score because during the film, when there was always these intense scenes, the music uh, honestly just picks up. It's like <laughs> it's like um, electronic music when you're just waiting for the beat to drop. <laughs> you know, it yes. gets that tense and then you just, boom, there goes the score where all of a sudden some dramatic scene happens during the movie mm-hmm. and Lara Croft is facing danger all of a sudden or something is about to something is about to happen and you're waiting for something to happen but it ends up being like a little bit of a comical scene in a way but it, it's kind of like a, a i guess a trope i guess yeah on um, it, it can be a very cliche movie <coughs> at times like yeah. i definitely i definitely felt that um patrick what, what about you how would, well i have seen the originals um okay i play the video games i think i even read the comic books to a certain extent Wow, so you are like a big Tomb wow. Raider fan. Well, I worked at GameStop for a long time, so okay. I was just like okay. in that culture of, of game of just all, like, and that was when Tomb Raider was. So, so, so at GameStop, you paid someone like fifty cents to turn in their whole collection of Tomb Raider <laughs> things. Why would I give them fifty whole cents when I can get it for a quarter? Um, <laughs> One <so>. quarter portion. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much that was me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the f- the first two when they came out. I don't, mm-hmm. I haven't seen them in a long time, so I don't know if they've held up. And I I saw some reviews for this film weren't that great even before I went into it. But fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? But to be, honest, to be honest, I had a good time. It was I knew what I was going in to see. I was going to go see an ad- adaptation of a video game. So maybe my expectations being where they were walking in, mm. I had a good time. The music didn't bother me. I actually kind of dug it, like the way they worked it in. Um, 
and it was it was what I thought it was going to be. To me, nothing will ever touch Indiana Jones. Yeah, they got it yeah. right. And 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 to be clear, I'm not saying like oh, because it had a female lead, it, that has nothing to do with it. Mm. It just Indiana Jones was what it was at a, the right time in my life. Like I was a little kid watching it, and it just blew me away. But I like those types of films, like that kind of adventure. Couldn't wait, and I I loved it. I had a great time watching it. It for me, it delivered on everything I had hoped I would get from it. I wasn't expecting an Academy Award winning film. You know what yeah. I mean? But it was great. I love her. I love the, the, the premise, love the games. So the film was, was just right. Um, they had some, I, I loved the, the pawn shop scenes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Those were good. And so, you know, and, and I, I loved where it left off, whether that leads into another one or not. I just <laughs> loved where they, they took the story. They, they mm. really, it was a true origin story in that you didn't even really get to the character, you know, from the games until the end. Yeah. Okay, I do have to ask this question though. Mm-hmm. Was was there any reference to her being a? This is going to spoil it again. A a uh, poor courier in the courier? oh back in the games. Yeah. That's got to be a new thing because she's doing That's like new. she's yeah. doing like Postmates, which is like yeah. a modern job that people didn't do. Yeah, in yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. it was definitely yeah. updated for the times. Yeah, but I feel like there there was always because even in the original films there was you know her father had disappeared and I he left her some kind of message I don't remember very well but I do remember I think her uh, Angelino's fa- uh, Dilly's father played her father in the first one if I remember correctly so hmm. um, so that that thread has always been there that he was the adventurer and that's how she kind of right. got got pulled into the life and and I feel like that was in one at least one of the games I don't really remember see it was it was hard it was hard for me to see that transition from her becoming a courier to an all of a sudden an all out badass adventurer i, I but, felt i felt like they at least showed that her father was training her in certain things like you saw him yeah. teaching her archery so it wasn't a huge jump to think that he probably taught her to do a lot of stuff like that uh it would have been different if she was like at, at like you know boarding school the mm-hmm. whole time and I, I thought it was set up really well because they also had like the the boxing scenes as <laughs> yes, well right and that actually played kind of into her character development because you know she couldn't figure out how to uh, beat the other woman when she was boxing and then towards the end of the film she's like doing martial arts and she is successful and uses mm-hmm. some of the same moves that were like used on she her trying, yeah you know yeah. in that scene so i thought that was everything in the film like tied in really well like uh, i felt like that they set up everything so that everything that she was able to do made sense um however i will say that this being a pg-13 film the fact that it's pg-13 actually made it a little bit unrealistic mm. because mm-hmm. the, the stuff that she was going through in this film this would make someone look uh, a little bit more disheveled. Mm. She would have. She would have. <laughs> honestly, she would, probably would have died earlier in the movie if this was a more realistic film. Yeah. Because, you know, we'll talk about. Uh, I don't. If I can talk mention, about it. The there was that whole scene where she was taking you know a ship with Lou, this other character named Lou Ren, mm-hmm. and they just there his his boat looks wrecking cheap, like broken, crashing into the. Um, the rocks uh, uh, near the island that they were going to, and she has to jump off the boat, and she's, you know, in rough, really, really rough waters, and she's being banged up left and right, yet there's hardly any scars on her, no bloody contusions or anything like that. Yeah, no, no, and that's like that throughout many scenes where things are happening where you would expect her to be a lot more beat up than she she is. Crashing into trees from a broken parachute. I mean, it's like, got that in, any... it's got the Indiana Jones well, she like She probably died in the water and respawned. This is a video game, guys. <laughs> right. It's a video game, right. She right. has extra lives or some type of I mean, if Indiana Jones can survive, you know, jumping out of like a plane in like a dinghy like <laughs> And that's what I was thinking. It's like uh, it, it wasn't super realistic, but how much yeah. realism do we go in for in an ad- adaptation of a video game? Like right. I, I want to see crazy stuff like that in this type of film and just yeah. enjoy the ride. And and I was just going to say the same thing. And yeah, Jones, like upon watching as an adult, oh, yeah, he got away oh, yeah. with a lot too. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I really enjoyed this film. I had I have not I don't know anything about this franchise at all. So I just went in. This was my introduction to the franchise. Mm. Same and with me. Yeah. you know, aside aside from just thinking, oh, this is like Indiana Jones, but with like the plot of Rogue One. You know, like you know that the I was like, this is actually a pretty fun movie to yeah. watch. It's really cool. I thought that it was paced really well. There weren't any parts that were really, like boring to me. Like I said, I thought they set up her character very well, and everything that they did at the beginning of the film tied into the end of the film, so it made sense. They weren't wasting time on anything. 
Um, and the only thing that got me, and then the, and then it resolved itself, is at first when they showed her as a really young girl mm. and her father was leaving. Yeah, and they kept saying I, he had been gone for what was it seven years? Yeah, I was. And a I kept little... doing the math. I'm like, is she supposed to be what, like sixteen? And I, then, I had then trouble with that. Too. Later, yeah, I had trouble with more, that. Yeah, too. when they showed her again, I, and I was like, okay, that's just one of his many trips. <laughs> then I was okay, yeah, but it was, it was bugging me for for like a good thirty minutes. So just going. Well, how old are they trying to make her out to be? She can't be playing like a, you know, high school student here, but yeah. but then it worked. Yeah, no, no, no. That that was a little weird. I agree, but they did fix it mm-hmm. after you saw the other scene. So, I'll I'll give them credit for for fixing that that little problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and also kind of the thing that I liked about the film, like obviously we're talking about Indiana Jones and the most recent modern ad- adaptation of Indiana Jones is Crystal Skull, which is <laughs> has some kind of mixed reviews uh, yeah. from fans and stuff. And one of the things that I think people we're kind of like so-so about is how like that film did get like so like supernatural with all like the Mm -hmm. aliens and the stuff and i thought that it was and again watch the film go and watch it right now if you don't want to know kind of the twist at the end because i'm going to kind of roughly talk about it right now um is kind of basically what you learn at the end of the film is that what everybody thought has been supernatural has a natural explanation mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at the end of the film. And I thought that was kind of cool that they did that because it grounded in re- in reality. A film that's very unrealistic is actually something that could f- technically feasibly happen in our universe, even though it's a video game and it's like a fantasy adventure film. Yeah. It's still something that, that, that they brought back into like science and stuff. And I thought that was... That was kind of cool. Like I thought that was a good twist. Yeah, what, I agreed. What, what about what about the what about the villain? Let's talk about the villain. Mm. Uh, what was his name? Vel. V- mm. Vague. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I forgot his name. It started with a V. I, I know. He he mentioned Matthias Vogel. 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 Yeah. Um, I pr- I felt that he was pretty. He was pretty vicious yeah. from the get go. I think he was very intimidating at the first introduction. Yeah. Um, between between him that interaction um about Vogel and Laura in the tent when Laura just you know was just uh, uh captured and and uh when she woke up and was revived it's like I am this guy I am taking control of this whole entire camp and he's very adamant about what he wants as well too yeah. so I played I felt that he played a very uh decent villain probably not the most amazing villain but he was no frills a straightforward um, let me get this. I'm glad that you guys have come here because now I can obtain my goal. And it seems, and it seems very cliche to have that as well too. But it would, it does set up the original idea that um, this person has the information. Again, we're having to go in that uh, uh, Indiana Jones direction where somebody Actually, has that know, information. You know what film it reminded me of? Last Crusade. That scene when she wakes up in his tent and he's like, "I'm glad you're here." Because he's finally going to get in. It was very much like Tron Legacy. When, <laughs> when Sam meets Blue for the first time, and he says, I'm not your father, Sam, but I'm so glad you're here. It was very, very similar. <laughs> so, uh, so, so in our comparisons between <laughs> Tron and... I also got that, a Batman vibe to it, too. I'm going to work in Tron was, Legacy on every... Like she, has this big, she has this big mansion, yeah. and it's this company that she's now like heading up. I'm like, oh, this reminds me... She reminds me of Bruce Wayne, but very like much, yeah. more Indiana, what Indiana Jones does than Batman does. Mm-hmm. But her character reminded me of Bruce Wayne a lot. Because they, they could do so much with that going forward if if they should make another. Yeah, which that, I feel like they are. I, I well, it has to do with how well this how, one does. How much money it makes. But I'll, but, I'll check that as you continue talking. But... Um, then again, then again, it could be a thing that if, if they own the rights to make an, a Tomb Raider movie within X number of years, they may just make one not to lose the rights. So that's that's you know. that's a good point. So uh, you never know. It's made two hundred and seventy four million dollars. So Do we far? know what the budget was? So that doesn't sound too bad. The budget was ninety four million. So oh, okay. it's, it's so cleared that. over. Join us next year when we review the yeah. sequel. <laughs> I think this is going to happen. <laughs> So I would like to see that, be, as opposed to working out of her little father's little uh, little dungeon, she could have a whole croft cave under the under the mansion by the next <laughs> next uh, next installment. So yeah, it almost she's seems- got. I mean, she signed the, the the interesting thing, and of course, spoilers is that she signed over power of attorney at the end, but. So she may not be running the companies, but she should still have access to plenty of money, plenty of plenty of resources. Yeah, and I do actually. want to see this get resolved with the story they've set up. And, and I actually kind of hope they don't resolve it in the next one. Like, no, I, I think out. you know if this movie does if this movie does that well and the studio does uh, actually consider it, and if you know we have something good later on, the, the interesting thing is 
that the end of the movie actually kind of implies that they're going to have a mm-hmm. sequel. Mm-hmm. And I would actually be interested in seeing that because the lead-in, the tie-in into that is actually kind of explained and implied at the end of the movie as well, too. We see this whole corporation that's being that's just dominating across the globe, and Lara is just finding this out. That mm-hmm. Yeah, she doesn't discover you know, who the villain is until the final the scene very of the film, end. if you don't yeah. count the post-credit yeah. scene. But yeah. We have somebody that is just leading the whole organization maybe even somebody higher than her yeah it's it's so i'll make a correction when i googled it it was the numbers from the 2001 film Uh-oh. unfortunately oh, no. so oh, this no. film had a good friday okay it made like 10 million dollars okay okay um which is considered good it was the best film on friday okay. but the weekend so far overall black panther is still having a stronger performance so it's still yet to be seen uh, actually black panther's oh. a juggernaut so yeah it's just yeah. gonna be tough either yeah. Way. yeah 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 and then that tying into but, just black panther and then Infinity War just riding the wave. But let's yeah. not forget that, that, that a lot yeah. of action and adventure films do really well overseas. Too. <laughs> and it did, a, I believe Tomb Raider did very well in China. It yeah. made more money in China than it did in the United States. Yeah. So, so that's a really good sign. Yeah. I, I think we could we'll potentially see another. I, I think so. As long as it's doing well in China, we're good because the China Chinese market is just going to keep expanding. So anything that does better in China than it does here, I think has a good chance of right. continuing into a franchise. Yeah. I, I am really, I'm, you know, I'm should, down. I'm down. I'm down for. And another... I thought. And I thought Alicia had a great performance yeah, as well. Like great. I, I was very impressed with her. The amount of physical stunt. I don't know how much of that was yeah. her own stunt. She was shredded. But <laughs> oh man, like she, the things she was doing with her body. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like the amount of training that it would take to do that. Like that. that... And 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 I've seen her in a, a number of things, but not as many things as I had seen. Um, Maleficent. What, yeah. At the time, Angelina sorry, Angelina. I just went blank for a second. Yeah. At the time that that came out. So yeah. when I watched the first one, it was. You were just watching Angelina Jolie, whereas this time yeah. you felt like you were watching Laura Croft. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree completely. And it helps that I, this is the first Alicia Vikander film that I've seen as well because I would feel that way about Angelina Jolie. Cause I thought you've seen Ex Machina. Um, oh, she was in that. She's a robot. Oh, my gosh. I That's didn't even... That's why she was so able to jump around this so much. Oh, She's actually a robot. This is the second time in the show that <laughs> Ex Machina has been brought up, and I didn't realize there was a connection between that and a film that we were reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I need to just watch Ex Machina again, because apparently there's all these connections that I don't it's remember. There's a couple guys from Star Wars in there, too, I think. Hashtag it's all connected. Really? <laughs> Wait, no. I think I know <laughs> I that. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Any other final thoughts about this film before we move on? Uh, great film, great stunts. I uh, recommend watching it. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would. I would recommend. I would take a friend to go watch it. I, I don't mind watching it again. Yeah, bring a friend. It's rewatchable. So you can buy two tickets, and it makes more money, so they'll make another one. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it. Go I'll watch see. it multiple times. Matinees. Let me see. What else? What else can I think? Because I, I remember watching it. I, I actually just watched it last night too. Um, trying to think of what other scenes I wanted to discuss. Um, Lou Ren's character. I mean, was he? Was he developed well enough? Uh, okay, here's the thing. So I, I like that the film <laughs> what was very kind of like feminist and like she didn't really need him necessarily. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of off helping, but, you know, <laughs> it was mainly about her. So I like that. And the fact that it was like that did, you know, you had less screen time for him and less stuff for him to do. And his story was – he was very much an ancillary character for her. Yeah. And so I don't know. Like certain films – like kind of like big budget superhero films, for example, and like uh, really ensemble cast films, I do really want to see good development from multiple characters. And I'm disappointed when it's really too focused on one. Like Black Panther, I thought could have used a little bit more development for some of the supporting cast. But for a film like this that is very much about Lara Croft, like I think it's, I'll give it a pass for it being just about Lara Croft because Mm. that's kind of what it is. We wanted to bring uh, Lauren into this, and I know we, she hasn't seen the film, um, but just based on, on just based on our conversation alone already, and what we've mentioned about the film, is this something that you would be interested in? Would you see it as a really empowering film, especially from um, um, from a female perspective? I mean, we we want to get your insight into this. Oh yeah, it's this. on my list of long movies. I need to name the song. Yeah, I loved Indiana Jones as a kid. I loved Rogue One. So hearing what you guys have yeah. to say about it, I'm really excited to see this film. Yeah, whether it be soon or in like. <laughs> Is there some? Have you have you seen yeah. the Have you seen some of the trailers or some of the promo material? But like months ago, I'm gonna go home and rewatch them because mm. I was like, yeah. "What are you guys talking about?" So yeah, <laughs> okay. but I'm excited to see the film when I can finally can see it. Okay, so yeah, so, of course, yeah. What was it? What, was there anything that you saw? Anything that stuck out that probably got you like hey i need to see this as well too is it is it is it the character herself or is it just intrigue personal intrigue both or both both 
And just, Obviously. again, the Indiana Jones Rogue One thing. Because, yeah. like, when I was watching it, I was realizing, like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty much the plot of Rogue One. It's just in the Indiana Jones <laughs> type genre film. I know. We have that we have that whole <laughs> whole entire umbrella of Indiana Jones just yeah. going into this. And, yeah. it, you know, it, it's a fair, I would say, in my opinion, it's a fair comparison. Oh, yeah. Because um, we see a lot of, you it's, know, equal... it's the Rogue One of the Indiana Jones franchise, but it's not in the Indiana Jones franchise. But I, if it was, the ending like, is a little different. I kind of, I kind of, yes. <laughs> I kind, I kind of wish, I kind of wish that like Crystal Skull had been like a storyline like this. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like that would have I think been way better received. But then again, at that time, it would have been a little ahead of its time. And people have been like, what is this? 